let's do this. This next guest I'm really excited for. I think uh Bruski uh is this, or did this is the guest that's gonna talk to us about uh the Alexa, the phones listening to us, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we've got a cybersecurity expert coming on because this has come up a lot. It came up on the show a week ago, but it's come it comes up in my life all the time about you know, our phones spying on us. We know that our phones do, but how far does it really go on? Is it really eavesdropping? Is it just, I mean, what is it? So this came up last week and I've got this, uh, uh, I've got Alex Hammerstone from trustedsec.com coming on. So I don't know. I got some questions for the guy and I, I figured we'd just kind of see, see what the real scoop is as far as how much your phone spying. Yeah, I think it's fascinating, dude. And it's obviously a question over our household a lot. But are we bringing not only phones into this, but like Alexa and Google devices, stuff like that? Are we yes. covering the whole gamut? Yeah, I okay. put it all under the same umbrella because Siri's on my phone. I'd like to know how much she's really listening and Alexa and all that stuff. So, yeah, so whatever. Cybersecurity, it's it's what's spying on us and what's the good and the bad and et cetera. So let's do it all right so let's uh let's bring our guest in we can all uh say hello to him i refuse all right um this is a fun part of zoom it's you know the old days we had producers answering phones so all right alex are you hey. there hey how's it going all right hey, hey. Uh, alex this- welcome to the vocal minority with nick and steve uh it's great to have you on the air with us today dude it's a pleasure to be on very good we were just uh talking about this that um, first of all, this is Alex Hammerstone with trusted sec, uh, trusted sec.com. Is that the uh, correct website for you, Alex? That's correct. All right. So we're always talking about this. Like, you know, we know our phones spy on us, quote unquote, but to what extent and what are the good, the bad and all that kind of stuff. So we brought you on here. You're a designated cyber expert. Can you tell us, I guess, what, uh, what your background is? So we, uh, so we know we can trust your trusted answers. <laughs> sure. So, so currently I work as an information security consultant uh, for a company called Trusted Sec. I've been there close to 10 years. Uh, we work with organizations to help them assess and build information security programs. So we have a lot of what we think of as ethical hackers, people that break into systems under contract mm. and then help organizations kind of fix the problems they saw. Um, prior to that, I worked for a, a software startup for a number of years in security and compliance roles. And before that, I was also in uh, security consulting. So I've been around the industry a while, worked with a lot of clients from sole proprietorships uh, to multiple members of the Fortune 50. Nice. Right on. All right. So, uh, yeah, Alex, I guess try to answer me in, uh, I guess, general terms. Like, are our phones spying on us, quote unquote? Absolutely all the time, but probably <laughs> not in the, the ways that most of us think, right? You know, uh, yeah, spying is kind of a loaded word. Yes. And so when you think of spying, you're probably thinking of, um, you know, something maliciously listening to you without your permission. And all that's possible. Somebody could install something on your phone or, or what have you. In general, most of the spying is is with our implicit permission because uh, we're signing away our rights all the time with these user agreements. And I think people would be absolutely blown away if they knew just how much information is out there about each of us. Yeah. Those uh, security agreements are the, you know, uh, the rules of whatever. Am I really supposed to read those things? So that's a great question. I guess technically, yes. But there was a performance art piece uh, a few years ago where somebody printed out uh, all the end user license agreements from some of the most common sites and services that we use. And just to see it visually, the number of pages. And if you were to try to read all those, I, I forget <laughs> the exact numbers, but they kind of calculated how long it would take somebody. Yeah. And even if you can understand and interpret all the legalese, just the amount of time to read all that is pretty much impossible for any of us. Right. It's kind of a joke almost. Like we have to click to agree upon it, but none of us are going to really read it. So none of us truly understand what we're agreeing to. That's true. Although there are organizations out there, uh, you know, nonprofits that do look through those things and study them and hopefully raise the alarm for anything that's really egregious. But I hate to tell you, you know, the longer I'm in, on the consumer side of this business is people just don't care. People just really aren't that worried. You know, I like yeah. to say, it, you know, would, would you spend more on a, a product, the exact same product from an organization that really valued your privacy um, or not? Right. I mean, it's, it reminds me a lot of airlines. Everyone complains about the narrow seats. You know, they're too short. I'm 6'3", so I hate it. But when the airlines offer, uh, you know, bigger seats for more money, nobody buys them, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same thing. What people say they want and what their actions look like tend to uh, really be the opposite. Yeah, it doesn't seem like uh, people care as much as they they should until it's too late, right? 
until they've been hacked. And then maybe they'll, you know, have a different practice about what they go with, how much they'll pay for their security. I've been there. I bet I, you know, I, I definitely treat it more serious now because I have been hacked and it sucks. Yeah. But even beyond being hacked, like for me on Facebook, I know there's a way for me to shut off them following me, but as soon as I do that, then they're not recommending videos they know I would like, or, you know, targeted ads that I'm actually want. So I don't know, Alex, should we care? Should it just be like, who? Ca- I'm one of a zillion points of data they have. It's that's a tough question. And, and really anything in our digital lives, it's, it, it really is an exercise and is it worth it, right? Even if you think about the, the the connected devices in our homes, you know, for some people, for me, I love that the dryer alerts my phone when it's finished, right? Because stuff mm. comes out hot, you, you can hand iron it, saves you some trouble, right? But other things that people connect to the internet really for no reason, you know, are you really getting a benefit out of it? And it's the same thing with social media, right? Um, you know, there a recent case where, you know, somebody was, I, I believe, murdered, um, you know, in a restaurant because they had posted their location on social media and they, you know, then they, they were, um, you know, had some expensive items on or things like that. So you just have to ask yourself, mm-hmm. is it worth it to share this information for the benefit that I get? I can't answer that for anyone. Yeah. Let me ask you this, you know, Nick's talking about getting hacked and I'm just talking about regular, you know, surfing Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Are you any more likely to get hacked by somebody, you know, up to no good if you are agreeing to these terms and services or are those two different categories? That's a complicated question. Uh, I could probably talk for a few hours on it (laughs) and it, it, it really depends, right? I mean, the more information that we're giving out, the, the more information that hackers can use to target us. Uh, you know, obviously there are cases, you know, if you're a public figure or, you know, a certain situation, somebody may come directly after you. But a lot of times the hacking and the scamming is a numbers game. So they'll send the same, you know, fake text message to a million people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my mother-in-law was actually here today and, you know, she asked me if something was a scam and it was from a bank she doesn't use. I'm like, right. Well, it's a scam, right? But if you send that to a million people, then some percent are going to actually bank there. Right. So, so it really depends. Uh, you know, but as I said, just the amount of information out there that leads people to think they're being spied on, it's usually because you already gave them the information they needed to to you know make that connection. Right. I've wondered that sometimes on Facebook, like, let's say I was just talking about taking a trip to Mexico. And then a few days later, I see an ad. Was it really eavesdropping? Or am I just in an algorithm where they know I went to Mexico once? It's been a few years now. So it's just sort of a coincidence that they're predicting me. So a couple ways to answer that. Um, You you know, one of the things you got to keep in mind, there's some confirmation bias to it. So you may see 10,000 ads in a week, Mm -hmm. and two of them are related to things you talked about, right? And and we ignore the rest of the ads, right? right? They stand out, though, because I feel I talked about it. They stand out. And it's, it's, uh, gosh, I'd have to look, but it was a long time ago, there was an article you know, called, you know, does Facebook know you're pregnant before you do, right? Yeah. Because it was a, a case where, you know, somebody's father got really angry because his daughter was getting ads for baby products. And it turns out she was actually pregnant, right? And they don't necessarily know how they know, but it's just, they can start to take these pieces of data, right? I mean, there's some simple things like, hey, you got married a year ago and you bought tickets, you know, for a honeymoon a month ago, maybe you're <laughs> pregnant, right? They can make that association. Yep. And so, you know, there are a lot of ways that they can start to piece together information and really get a whole picture about you. Well, so then let me ask the big question we've all been asking. Is is your phone, is Siri or Alexa, are they actively eavesdropping and do they take keywords to send for ads or whatever it is? Is that a thing? If you give them permission. Uh, so there's a lot of things in the settings. You know, generally no, um, you know, especially to those specific kind of um, digital assistants you know, they, they do have to be listening, right, to catch the keywords. Yeah. And there have been various stories, you know, about how much that information is pertaining and, and things like that. But in general, and this is there's a big, you know, a big qualifier to it. The answer is no, right? I mean, it's they, they don't need to, right? So why would you have this huge scandal of spying on millions of people when you don't need to? Because people will just give you all the information you need as a marketer. They'll just give it right to you. Right. Nick, was it Nick or Bruce? Which one of you were telling me the story about the the people that, you know, have a job listening and it leads to depression and all that? What, who was that? I, I did. That, that was when I worked at Verizon. So what what was it? Uh, so they, they have these this room where they have people who monitor content and they, they had a sign on the door on the outside of it that, that said that, you know, um, 
if you went in there, you would possibly see, you know, nudity or violence and objectionable, something that some of them might find objectionable, and that they actually had people in there who monitored all those contents, and that um, they had um, mandatory counseling sessions at certain times and, and that, that sort of thing. And that they had a lot of problems because they with... were actively listening to, was it when people were asking Alexa something or the, are you saying that Alexa was just recording and they were listening to the raw recordings? No, no, it was, it was, it was internet. It was internet this content concept. on the internet. It wasn't, it wasn't listening to people, but that's no. a whole different, that's exactly. a whole different thing. Uh, Steve, I mean, you, uh, you heard from somebody that their daughter had a job yep. that, actually listened to people from Alexa and transcribed or translated. Isn't well, that what you said? Yeah. So I just met a woman whose daughter is bilingual, had lived in Europe. So and she was saying, Alex, that her job, she's in Spain and she, she listens to Alexa recordings in Spanish to translate better into English for the coder so they can interpret Spanish better, but she's listening. To, is any of this sound accurate, true? Are people really doing any of this? So oftentimes with a story like that, what it is, is that you can voluntarily share your information, right? So I may choose to, you know, allow a, a service like Amazon or, or somebody else to use my recordings to create a better user experience. And people are oftentimes compensated for that or given free products, right? I mean, it's it, that that's how a lot of, you know, translation or local localization happens, uh, that people are willing to give samples. You know, it's a little bit analogous to, you know, when you're installing something on your phone or computer and it says, you know, do you want to share crash data, you know, to, with mm -hmm. Apple or something like that. But generally, uh, again, it, it's, is it possible? Yes. But really you think about these multi-billion dollar corporations, you know, they, again, they just, they have so much information about us. They have all your purchasing history, right. you know, think about all your shopper cards at the supermarket, Think about all the things that you're using a, a credit card for. Think about all the things you search, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Now, one thing that's kind of fascinating is if you just email a picture of, let's say, a bicycle to yourself, you'll start getting bike ads, right? Because you are you they you giving them permission by using that free email uh, program mm. to look at your images and kind of see what's in there. But again, it comes down to people just giving up their privacy. Right. I, I want to point out how disturbing what Alex just said is. He's basically saying they don't need to sit there and eavesdrop on you because they have all the data they need <laughs> already. So if you're worried about them eavesdropping, he's saying that's the least of your concerns. They know everything about you already. They don't need to pay someone to sit there and listen to you. So sleep better at night. The only real <laughs> issue of all of this that I'm I'm uh, curious or very curious about is I watch a lot of like crime documentaries and crime TV. And now here's the case where like, uh, if I have a suspect, I can go get a warrant, right. To track their phone or see who they've been calling, see their text messages. Can they do that with Alexa and Google to listen to these people in their home? If they got a warrant for it. So that that's a specific legal question. I'm not sure. Um, I believe they'd be able to subpoena records though. You know, you, you see it all the time in court cases where they bring up the search history. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're, if, if you're if you're planning a crime, I'm not you know I'm not encouraging crime. Sure. But maybe don't encourage <laughs> bury a body, right? Because oh, they're going to go back and and see that. You know, I think people forget that everything that you do online is tracked and available. And again, it's not a you know some conspiracy. It's well known and something that people are agreeing to with these services. But but to your specific example, I don't know. I mean, I'd have to imagine you know in some issue of national security that they could get your, turn your Alexa or something into a um, into a um, microphone a with yeah. you know the, the proper court permissions. But I'm not I'm not sure about that one. In, wow. in, uh, in yeah. What about the notion that hackers can take over your camera and see you? Hmm. So that's absolutely possible as well. Um, you know, so the, the best advice I can give you on that one is electrical tape or something wow. like that, right? I mean, because you can't defeat electrical <laughs> tape. With, uh, you know, there's a, um, a, a it, it's been out for a while, but there was, I think it was Mark Zuckerberg was being interviewed for something a few years ago and he had a piece of tape over his camera, right? Wow. I mean, it's, you know, so, but yes. And, and again, it's, it's, if you think about it, you know, we're using our computers right now and we have the camera turned on. And so anything that software can do by um, that, that you want it to do, then a hacker can generally also make it do that you don't want it to. Now, now, not to say that's common or it's simple, but a lot of the times when you're downloading free software 
or, or doing certain things, you may be giving those permissions to that software. Yeah. I do that on my dashboard when my check engine light comes on. So I guess it is going to do with my web camera now too. <laughs> For me, it's the tire pressure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we're talking with Alex Hammerstone from TrustedSec.com, cybersecurity expert. We're trying to figure out to what extent is your phone, your laptop, and everything else uh, spying on you. Uh, Alex, I've noticed of late um, that every website I go to now says that we, you know, we use third-party cookies and you have to click accept. Should you be doing that? Is there any way around it if you don't want to do it? What are these websites collecting on us? So generally, yes, there are a number of different types of cookies, right? Some that only follow you around for that session, some that, you know, have, have a lot more persistence and will follow you around websites. You know, there's a reason that when you go out to a certain website, you're seeing, you know, ads based on what you search on Facebook or what have you, right? It, a lot of that stuff's connected and, and follows you around. And not to oversimplify it, but when you start to, you know, look at how cookies are used, it helps them to know like which website pages you've already read, right? So it's not going to suggest the same thing or you see it kind of a different color of the link. And so again, a lot of these things, I, I want to choose my words carefully, but they're actually good as a user, right? Right. They do I mean, help in rather, a lot of ways. Right. Would you rather see ads for stuff you might actually buy? or you know, ads for something you'd never buy, et cetera. But generally, if you don't accept cookies, your user experience across the internet is gonna be a lot um, less pleasant. Um, you know, and, and you can use you know, certain things like incognito mode or, or things on a browser for a certain site you don't want using cookies with the huge caveat that it doesn't make you as incognito as you think, right. but there are ways to avoid the cookies. Um, you probably don't wanna do this, but if you were to go into your browser right now and delete all your cookies, you're going to have to go log back into all these sites you're used to getting onto. You're going to lose all your, you know, reading history and whatever else. Is that an intentional thing? The tech companies, they, they almost make it too good that we want to sign up for these, you know, cookies and tracking because there's advantages to it. Should we be like going above them and saying you should give them the advantages without tracking? It would be tough to do though without cookie specifically, right? I mean, it's, you know, from a technical standpoint, they don't need to be nefarious, right? I mean, they really can just help the user session. Um, you know, it's kind of what they do when they start to track you across multiple sites that that they start to get a much better picture of what you're doing. Yeah. Most of the time when I go to a web page that says like, hey, we do cookies, accept it here. If I just keep browsing and don't even click on it, it's, I'm not accepting, right? I'm still able to browse, so it's just not tracking me. Is that right? In general, yes. And I said, I want to be really careful how I use terms like tracking and, and sure. everything else. Because you got to remember, you know, your your computer really has a footprint or a, sorry, a fingerprint, um, even if they don't know your name or whatever it is, because it has your IP in general, um, you know, your, the address you're coming from. Uh, it knows the operating system, what version it is. It can see what versions of other software it has. So even without your name or, you know, your email or, or a cookie, it can still take all those factors and get a pretty good idea of who you are and, and whether you've been there before or not. Yeah, um, yeah. Not, not to be you know fatalist and say that you can't get away <laughs> from tracking, but if you really, if you don't want to be tracked, you know, the best way is to not use any technology or, or probably not leave the house given all the cameras that are out there. Right. Let, it, let me ask you that question on a practical level though. Is there a way to stop it? And even if you could, like you're saying, would it just ruin your online experience? It would make your online experience much more difficult, right? I mean, you could theoretically, you know, not accept any cookies and, you know, use, uh, you know, not really accept any of that stuff. But you're going to be starting fresh like a new user every time you hit that site or every time you go to a different site. Yeah. And again, it really comes down to a risk management decision, right? Is it is the experience worth it to you to kind of give up some of that privacy and control? Yeah. Right. Well, I have me, a question that steps ahead. a little bit aside from all of this that I've always been curious about. I think you might be able to kind of answer this, but I'm infatuated. I've never been there, but I'm infatuated with the dark web and actually what it is. First of all, is it illegal for me to go there? And second of all, is it is it tough to get? I, I wouldn't even know how to go to the dark web. Yeah, I even know what that is. I mean, I've heard of it, but is there a portal? <laughs> it's not so so i'm gonna give a, a, a 
the simplest answer that I can, if any of my technical friends are out there watching or, or listening, they're probably going <laughs> to pillar me a, a bit for this. <laughs> but in general, if, if you think about it, you know, when you type in, you know, www.website.com, um, it's translating that to a bunch of different numbers and everything else and directing your computer to that site. So the dark web is really just um, kind of a second layer or second level of the internet that you can't easily get to like that, right? You need a special browser to get to it. But uh -huh. all you got to do is go out and download it. And it's funny mm -hmm. because the dark web is actually fascinating. Um, you know, it... it I'll just tell you, I'm, I'm in my mid forties. And so my early internet experience, if you go to the dark web, it looks a lot like it used to, right. You know, back mm, yeah. when I first started, um, but it really is a whole marketplace out there for things, um, you know, and, and you can go out there and buy things and people are always shocked. I think by some of the professionalism of the design out there and, and the customer service, you know, you can go out there and buy credit card numbers. Um, if you want to buy credit card numbers that were stolen from a wealthy zip code, they're going to cost you more than credit card numbers stolen from a, a less wealthy zip code. Wow. You know, if you want to buy, um, you know, packs of data, if you want to buy someone's healthcare information, plus their credit card, plus, you know, whatever else it may be, that obviously raises the price. Um, wow. But really, whatever you want to buy out there is available. And it's not hard to get to. Um, and, and it's not illegal just to access it itself. I mean, obviously, if, if the, the site is hosting illegal content, that's much different. Sure. Okay. What, are, what are the security so my, risks on the dark web? I mean, we're talking about cookies from Amazon or something. What's going on out there? Well, so because you're you're uh, operating a little bit differently, the security risk would be much higher, especially <laughs> if you're downloading things or purchasing yeah, things, et cetera. It's uh, it's a bit of the wild west. That that's for sure. But but I think it's been made out to have kind of this mystique and be something that's you know really difficult to get to and inaccessible. Yeah. But you know most most uh, most people could probably figure it out pretty quick with a you know five minute tutorial. Wow. wow. Is, is it is it like just going to a bad part of town? Or, or is it a little, it's not as, quite as sinister as that? Well, I, it's, I don't know if I would exactly liken it to that. Um, you know, because, you know, you can go to the bad part of town and there, there are things that, that might be legitimate there, right? Uh, um, and, and so I think it's like that. There are people that, you know, use it for other reasons. But in general, for the average user, you know, if I'm, if I'm talking to kind of high school kids or something and, you know, you know for, to a class, you're probably not going to run into a lot of things that are good out there so it's probably a, a something you can probably avoid yeah i sure. imagine uh let me ask you the question that i think our audience wants to know the most are porn sites the most dangerous thing on the normal web and uh, how are you supposed to protect yourself out there so it, it's actually a really interesting question and you know they put in a ton of security right um because they have to you know it's their market and they tend to have a lot of money to spend on security and you have to remember that just like any other genre um of internet sites you know they're ones that are are run by big corporations that you know fall you know laws and frameworks and everything else to protect data and then obviously there's sites out there that are not like that right so it's just like any other um you know product so so to just say, you know, based on it being in that genre, it's dangerous. No, it, it, that, it's, it's the same as shopping sites or anything mm -hmm. else, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's certainly, you know, the, the big sites out there where you are, you know, feel comfortable using your credit card or your information. Um, but of course, with those sites, I like to think about it this way. You know, there, there's information that can ruin your day or your hour. And there's information about that you can ruin your life, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have your credit card hacked, and I say this as a consumer, right? As, a, as somebody that works with businesses, I want to protect credit card data all day, of course. But as a consumer, if my credit card is hacked, it, it's an inconvenience at this point, right? You're generally not liable for charges or whatever else. But if somebody gets your browser history or what if somebody got your text message history or things like that, mm. that could make for a really uncomfortable Thanksgiving, right? I mean, people see, you know, what you're saying about your uncle, whatever, right? Yeah. And so you sort of you think get about blackmailed and stuff too, right? Right. So I think for a lot of users, you know, if they're signing up for those types of adult sites and that type of login information were to get out, that might cause them bigger issues personally or professionally or whatever. Then, you know, if, if they shop at a, you know, a, a certain retailer that everybody shops at and their information gets out. So there is that piece. I gotcha. A bigger, so, bigger impact. So go with the, the, uh, the eBay and the Amazons of the porn world. <laughs> I've been wondering, you know, I always hear the dark web people threaten that they're going to release, you know, the browsing history of Ted Cruz or something, but it never happens. Is it really that easy or is it really that hard? Is that why it never happens? It depends what they have. I mean, really, you know, it, it's, it's for any given individual. It really depends on, you know, what's been breached, you know, from the sites they use or, or what have you. 
I will tell you one of the the most common things uh, that people kind of don't think about is what we what we call password reuse, right? Mm. And so if you use the same passwords across multiple sites and services, uh, you know, if one of those sites is breached and the hackers have your username and password that you use on some inconsequential site, and it's the same one you use in your banking. Yeah. Well, so when there's a, a, a breach and the hackers get names and passwords, uh, you know, from a site, they'll write a program to try that name and password combination on every All over in the yeah. country and everywhere else. And they get into tons of places. And so if they're able to get, you know, use something like that to get into someone's, you know, Twitter or browser or whatever else, they can start to look at the histories there. Yep. So, so you never know what they have. That's interesting. It's Let me ask you a world. Let me ask you a question, Nick and I. Have, uh, Nick and I have an agreement. If one of us drops dead, the other has to go to their house and delete their browser history. Does that actually delete anything, or is it all still out there? It it, it deletes it from your browser, right? But, but it's still out there on the computer, web, right? right? Right. I mean, it's it could be stored in multiple other places. Um, you know, you got to remember <laughs> when you, you delete something from a computer, and again, this is a kind of general. Is it, it's you're not necessarily removing it. You're just telling the computer that you don't need that space anymore. And when it needs that space, they can use it to overwrite it. Yeah, so if you really want to delete something, there are programs out there to kind of wipe it. Um, to really get rid of it, you know, you probably need to drill out that hard drive and you know, toss it <laughs> in the fire. But again, don't you. forget, right? It's, it's kind of like if you and I have a, you know, five year long text history and I want to get rid of, you know, that history and I delete it off my phone, well, it's still on yours, right? right. So same thing with your browsing history and anything like that. It may exist all over the place. You know, Anytime I get a new computer, I take the old hard, I take the old hard drive out. I smash the crap out of it. And I soak it in a bathtub, and then I smash it again and throw it in the garbage. Does that cover me? Am I good enough there? <laughs> depends From your hard drive. It, you know, it, it really depends. You know, it, it it's one of those things. That it's it's kind of on a spectrum. If the you know if the government really wanted to get the information mm. off that hard drive right. you know, for a national security investigation, they could probably get it right. But for the average user, you know, no one's going to, you know, use an electron microscope to look at the hard drive I took out of my computer right. to try to get the $41 out of my checking account, right? Yeah. Also, no. what the hell are you looking at, dude? What, I mean, what, what are you doing on the internet that you go through all of that to get rid of that hard drive? It's just, uh, that's up to me and my uh, my spirit guides. But, uh, it's no, therapeutic, I don't, right? I, you know, honestly, <laughs> I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surfing standard porn, of course. But no, I mean, just like he was saying, there's so much information you don't even think about that's on there. Buying history credit cards you ought to i just figure it's better to destroy the freaking thing right absolutely yes. yeah. yeah get rid of that hard drive and 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 you know most municipalities will have a, a service you know quarterly or or you know periodically where they'll they'll dispose of those things and shred you know shred the hard drives or whatever it is for you i got you uh we're talking with alex hammerstone cybersecurity expert with trusted sec uh i have one last question i don't know if nick and bruce have anything else but you mentioned this earlier like the scam texts that we all get that have some link to click on or whatever now i was always told that if you reply stop that they legally have to stop harassing you but then i saw some fbi like you know psa the other day that said don't reply to anything so what should you do if you get a scam text Usually just delete it. You know, the issue is, is yes, if you if you reply to a legitimate company uh, to stop, mm -hmm. they need to stop, right? Because there's recourse. I mean, you can sue them or whatever it is. You know, they can be sanctioned. Yeah. But a criminal who wants to take your money isn't <laughs> isn't going to follow, you know, the legislation and the regulations that, you know, about sending text messages. Sure. But are they getting uh, any info stop. by me replying? <laughs> So what they find out is that they know that somebody at the other end of that, you know, that text message chain is a real person and that's an active number. So when you reply mm. stop to a scammer, you are letting them know um, that that's a, a number where they can reach somebody. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, these and, are all, those are all good stuff. Yes, go well, ahead. And one thing that's fascinating about all the text scams is, you know, as I said, if you're a little bit older like I am, you know, when we first got email, it's, you know, you'd get a hundred spam messages for every oh, yeah. message actually wanted right and they've gotten really good at filtering that out right so i mean if you go on your mail service you're probably not seeing a lot of spam and of course that's made it harder for scammers and hackers so what do they do they move to your phone they just text you instead mm. wow now there you go nick brewski we got any other uh, questions before we uh say goodbye uh i think i'm covered but fascinating yeah. information man i appreciate you a whole bunch for joining us today yeah, yeah, Alex, uh, thank you. You've you've cleared up some stuff. The biggest one was, you know, is my phone listening to me? And you pointed out, hey, it doesn't matter. It knows everything about you anyway. Doesn't so, need to. Yeah. 
that's a deep thought right there. So, um, Alex, just uh, remind everyone, uh, you know, your company, how to get in contact with you, services, all that kind of stuff you guys offer. Sure. Trusted Sec. Uh, we're an information security consulting company. We do a lot of, uh, you know, testing and building of information security programs for companies of all sizes really around the world. Right on. Well, I'm sure you've got good job security with the world doing everything it's doing. So uh, we appreciate you taking the time. If we ever have another uh, interweb uh, question, uh, we'll get you back on. Thanks so much. Everybody have a great day. All right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, too, Alex. Alex. Thanks, Alex. All right. So there you go. That is uh, that is Alex Hammerstone, Trusted Sec. Com. fascinating stuff dude i mean uh here's the deal like uh it doesn't matter really we're just all kind of screwed if people want the information they could get the information you know you know you and i actually started talking about big brother on the original version of the show you know 16 20 back years ago and i yeah. remember saying like what do i care like have my information if you want to watch me you know sunbathe naked outside from a satellite go ahead like who am i what do you care about that but not sure how I feel about that anymore. Well, now drones are flying over everywhere, dude, and we don't yeah. know how far. They, I mean, they don't have to be that close to you anymore. We were, no, I can't remember where. I think I was out playing golf, dude. Oh, no, I was at the Dave Matthews concert, and at the Gorge, uh, they had people flying over, and they were getting down like five feet from my head, yeah. like listening to conversations, taking video, whatever they wanted to do, like, yeah, it's hard to hide unless you're in your house with no power. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's tough to hide today. I just read an article recently about somebody sued Google. Yeah, they lived in some hoity-toity gated neighborhood, and they didn't want their homes being on Earth, you know, the Earth view. or the Oh, Google view. Earth. Yeah. And Google, their response was basically, none of us have privacy anymore. Like, we can see you from right. the satellite. We can see you from the streets. So... Their legal defense was none of us have privacy, <laughs> so shut up. <laughs> yeah, it's a new world, dude, for sure. I get in arguments with my sister uh, over the holidays. I kept telling her when she'd come to my house, um, we'd be sitting there, and I'm always asking Alexa. I've got an Alexa, and I've got a Google. I'm always asking asking them to do shit for me. Yeah. And when there's people there that don't have it, they're like, "Oh wow, that's so convenient and cool." So I told my sister, "I'm going to get you an Alexa for Christmas because." it is it's nice to have some automation in your home right. it's like nope we don't want it we don't want it i don't want to be listened to or i was like you have your phone on you all the time different that's different that's not listening to me i'm like well so i'm gonna have her watch this podcast to prove to her that she's wrong yeah i've always made the point like who do you think you are why does anyone want to spy on you now, I understand exactly. if you're some world leader or something, that might be a little different. But really, does Facebook really care? They're spying on me. They have someone sitting there listening to me. I don't think exactly. So. Do you guys? Hey, here's another question. Yeah. Do you guys get the emails? I, I I don't get them all the time, but there was a time that I got I I got them quite frequently, and it would be an email. First of all, the place that I work at, our email server that we get our emails on sucks. I mean, yes. I don't, I get spam all the time. I have no way uh, of stopping it. Yes. Yeah, so I get it all the time too. Yeah. And there is no way to stop it. I mean, I really looked into it. So, uh, but I get uh, emails that say, Oh, Hey, we got your browsing history and we noticed that you like to go to adult sites and we hacked into your computer and turned your camera on. We've got footage of you masturbating. <laughs> Uh, pay us a thousand dollars and we're going to send it to everyone on your contact list. You have 30 days. I'd say and send it out and give me 10%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to, I want a talent fee for it, but do you guys ever get those emails? Uh, yeah. Have you? I mean, I get no. all sorts of phishing ones. Yes. But, but if I got one like that, I'd be like, go ahead, do it. Right. Send it. <laughs> Bruce, you we'll, love it. We'll, dude. That's the problem no, with we'll, the modern we'll, scams. Well, I get they send them out saying, you know, your Amazon account's been hacked. And I'm like, I have an Amazon account. Well, I should click on this. But yeah, yeah they've yeah. gotten good. Um, well, yeah, you know, I actually, ahead, Bruce, uh, and we are guests so, to standing by after. Oh, oh okay. okay. And my dad, when he was alive, one time I came home and and he was he was just so angry. And he's on the phone and, and he said Amazon was on the phone with him. And what did I buy to, to, with his credit card and this, that, and the other thing? And it was a scammer calling and saying yeah. that they had his they, but, but they wanted to confirm what the credit card number was of course. And, right. and that yeah. and, and i just said and i said dad hang up the phone right now he's like what i'm like hang it up yeah he hangs the phone up and he's like well why'd you why'd you tell me to hang up now well, how am i going to call amazon back 
And I said, Dad, <laughs> if they wanted it's to reach out to you, yeah, they, yeah. Would, they would email you. And when I told him all that, he was just like, you know what? I'm glad you came home when you did because I was ready to start, yeah. you know, confirming a credit it, card with them. I just that. had the same talk to my mom. My bank account's been suspended. I'm going to click on this. Link. I'm like, Mom, call the bank. Oh, it's a huge I'm, scam on, on senior citizens. You know, like uh, they all take the advantage of senior citizens all the time. It happens with my mom all the time. I've got her trained to the point where she'll call me first now. Yeah. So, no, for sure. But it happens yeah. all the time. Like Alex was saying, it's a numbers game. They try a whole bunch and someone will get it. So. All right.